Hello, my name is Stephen Atchison. I'm a student at Kennesaw State University in the Ex Instructional Technology Master's Program. For my capstone project, I created a website. It was called a Technology 2.0 Web Gallery. It was both for teachers and students. It was a website that allowed teachers and students to collaborate with each other and also to engage in learning from one another about technology tools. I completed this capstone and this website in spring 2015 semester. The site became live in April of 2015 and is still live. Why I chose to make this website? For a couple of reasons. For students, it was because students know how to use their cell phones. Students know how to use iPads. But sometimes students don't know how to use educational technology. They can send a text message or make the latest video in several seconds, but they don't know how to use technology tools such as Flipboard, Glockstore, Weebly, Flip, VoiceThread, or any of those. So with a how-to page on here, those students can learn from videos made by teachers how to use those tools. I chose to make this website for teachers because it was a way of professional developing their skills because there's so much technology shunning at my school. At Simpson Middle School, we have so much technology at disposable of the, for the teachers. Um, every classroom is filled with technology and there are other ways of getting technology in the classroom by checking out from laptops to iPads to com cameras. Um, but there are so many teachers who find technology as not useful for the classroom or that it's just games or for fun and they don't see the educational per pro opportunities that are given to them. Simpson is a BYOD school, which is another reason why I wanted to make this website. Students can have access to this website at any time. Um, also, BYOD stands for Bring Your Own Device. So, if a student wanted to learn how to make a certain presentation tool from a technology program or software, they could look up a how-to video on the website in their hands if the teacher has their uh, thumbs up BYOD sign up. The teachers are allowed to choose when BYOD is being used in the classroom. Now, there are several pros and cons to BYOD. The pros of BYOD is students have full access to technology. I mean, they can, if they have a cell phone, laptop, or iPad, they can bring into the classroom. They can use the technology in the classroom at all times if the thumbs up sign is up on the board. And engagement is higher and more opportunities are available if the teacher still uses the technology for educational purposes. There are several apps that a teacher can use, such as a game app called Kahoot, where teachers can use the Kahoot game for an assessment pretest or a review game. And students love it because they're competing with, with one another to get the correct answers. The cons of BYOD is, let's face it, there's distractions. When a student is allowed to bring their cell phone to class every day, they're going to use that cell phone. They're going to use, if they're not engaged in the class lecture, they're going to use it for texting or sending videos throughout the day. And it's hard to monitor when this technology is out and can be able to be used. And there's also not always equal access. Coming from someone who teaches sixth grade, there is several students who are not allowed to have technology yet in the classroom, such as cell phones. There are students who have the most up-to-date, best software, cell phones and iPads and Kindles to bring to school, and there are those who can't afford it or do not have access in general. Also, the BYOD thumbs up is not always used in appropriate ways. A lot of times, students are using that technology at the end of class because the teachers have used it as a babysitting tool. In other words, they behave for 45 minutes, the last 5 minutes they can play on their games. Nothing has been taught, it's not bell to bell um, opportunity for learning, and again it's just used as a babysitting tool. Or, the, at best, teachers sometimes use it for a Google search. Now, again, technology at Simpson, there's many opportunities. Each classroom has two desktops for each, the classrooms for students to use and print. Each classroom has a smart board and a document camera, three computer labs with about 30 computers in each, eight laptop carts for checkout. Each laptop has 28 laptops. And there are two iPod carts for checkout, which also have around 25 to 28 iPads for each 
cart. There is a green room for production and producing videos, which with a lot of creativity, teachers can use that for lots of different lesson opportunities. And there are four cameras and tripods, again, which can be used for several different technology lessons. The proposed plan was to create this website to have different tabs for some dedicated to students, some dedicated to teachers, and some dedicated for both, such as the blog page and the Q&A page. The blog page was just to talk about technology, to vent, to, to share ideas, to get excited. The Q&A page is for students and teachers to comment and ask questions about how do you use this tool? This is happening right now. How do I fix it when, in terms of troubleshooting? Troubleshooting is a big thing when people are using new tools, and that's the thing that scares people away from technology. I start off with this um, quote from a Dr. Martin from University of Colorado when researching about the appropriate ways of using um, website galleries. What I came about to learn was flipped classrooms and blended classrooms. And this quote was about the flipped classroom. Students are effectively educating each other. It means they're in control when the classroom has been flipped. Now, why does a flipped classroom and a blended classroom have to do with a online gallery? Well, eventually, teachers are going to want to use flipped classrooms and blended classrooms when they get these tools. Students are going to be more likely to learn and to collaborate more on a flipped classroom lesson or a blended classroom lesson when they're using the website. This website is a jumping force or jumping platform for teachers and students for a flipped classroom. I've started blending classroom, bl blending lessons in my own classroom and they work well. Students use this website first and they can use this site any point when I do a certain technology tool on my flipped classroom lesson and they're having trouble. After I proposed this to my principal, I had to use this quote too when proposing the plan is after our meeting he says, with, these tool, with this tool, both teachers and students can learn more about technology in one simple place. That's the best part of the website, is that it's one site, one place for questions, ideas, resources, collaboration. It's one site just for Simpson. It's geared towards just Simpson's teachers, Simpson students, Simpson parents, the Simpson community. It's one place for all of us to use. Now, before I could get the website started, I had to have conversation pieces with admin, SSP, and PTSA. My admin conversation was just setting up the website, of how, why I would want the website for Simpson, why he would want the website for Simpson, and why everyone at Simpson could use this website for multiple reasons. SSP is our school leaders, our school department chairs, um, our key team leaders all coming by to make statistics school plan and what we do in those meetings is try to improve our school and I want these leaders of our school to hear about this website and how this website could improve our school and the technology aspect and lastly I want parents to be involved parents can use the website too they can see their students using the website if their students have a trouble with something teachers can or, I'm sorry, parents can watch the videos as well about how to, I don't know, make a Glogster or how to add a page to their Weebly websites when, in my classroom. And parents can learn as well. Now, once I got the administration on board, I had to do the hardest thing, get the teachers on board. With so much on teachers' plates, they feel like they're overwhelmed and lo loaded with new trainings. Now, at my training, I had to get them on board. I had to listen to them and know my audience, know that some of them were going to be not wanting to do this and some of them were going to be on board and ready to go. Being prepared for questions was also important. This is the agenda that I gave my teachers. First, we had to talk about why it was needed, the pros of the website, the why and the who the website was for, what my job was to make the website, the layout of how everything would look on the website, the goals that I wanted to get out of this website for both the teachers and the students, as well as the parents. And then I did a question and idea section. A lot of good ideas came from these teachers that are on the website today. After that meeting, I took a little survey of how often technology was truly used in the classroom. It was anonymous, so teachers were very honest. Um, what you can see is four days a week in the classroom is actually predominantly used in a classroom. But after going 
into the technology, it learned that those four days a week was actually used with smart boards and YouTube videos. So yes, technology is being used, but they don't know how often the right tools are being used. Or let me rephrase that. They don't know what the right tools are, or they don't have the ideas besides the smart board and YouTube. When creating the website, once it was in development, we had I used the technology team to help me. What we wanted on the site was a blog area, a Q&A area, a teacher resource page, a teacher lesson idea page, and a how-to section for students. The notes and the bolts of the site, the teachers would use a collaboration page for talking to one another. The library resource page was articles on technology, um, articles on pros and cons of different sources, and then the ideas page was just lesson plan ideas, just like you would on Pinterest or um, teacher pay teachers. For the students, it was ideas on how to use technology for the classroom and how-to videos. But those could also be used for teachers. So we did the for everyone pages, the collaboration cafe, the how-to videos, and the news on the school. While they're on the website, they can get news on what's coming up later. For example, we're getting new technology next year in different forms. The website keeps us up to date on new technology that's coming to Simpson Middle School. The results. Okay. This chart shows how many views per week this site happened. The first week, um, around 20 or so teachers viewed the site, students about 40, and parents less than 20. This was done on a survey. Um, then the fourth week, it gained more, and then the sixth week, it was even more. The success rate was going up every week because there was more added to the website, and teachers and students and parents found the advantages of using the site to gain ideas. Now my conclusion and reflection is on this video. In conclusion, the website was a success. Overall, the teachers seem to be using the website more often. Um, they are gaining resources and lesson plan ideas from one another. And the students are using it for how to videos mostly and to ask questions about technology. And sometimes they send that questions about classes and getting answers from other students. And for technology based questions. The part that we need to work on later is to even if your parents know that um, they are teaching you to you can ask questions about the or to watch the how-to videos if they ever need to help the child work on the project at home. Or the other one is that we need to make sure the website is relevant. Right now there's 12 videos on there on how to but as more apps are created or developed or more ideas come to us, we need to constantly update the website. I need to make sure that I'm managing the website every week so that students and teachers, when they come to the website, always have something new to look at. We have to keep it consistent. The blog posts are for anyone to blog about. So when people send me blog posts about how to use a voice thread or um, you need to use less cell phones or more cell phones in the classroom, whatever the topic may be, they need to keep updating, updating the blog so that people are constantly coming to the website, check out the blog post, and while they're there, they're checking out other sites. Overall, the website was a success to make. It kept teachers collaborating with one another. It kept students and teachers coming together to talk about technology. And it was kind of cool to see that teachers and students had the same questions sometimes about different things, and they were learning at the same time. Being able to make the website into a collaboration section, the teachers and students tend to work together, learn together, and also share ideas. Overall, this website gave a new spin on a flipped classroom or a technology gallery. Now anyone from parent, student, or teacher can use this website to gain knowledge on any technology tool that comes to mind. In the future, we think I'm going to continue to build on the website, adding new tools, new ideas, new resources, and maybe even new pages. It's a collaboration. So anytime a teacher or student gives me an idea, I'll post it on the website. Again, my name is Steven Atchison, and this was a Web Gallery 2.0 website for students and teachers.